so you talked about some of your sort of beliefs um, at the time. You were talking about conspiracy theories about 9-11 and, you know, all this yeah. stuff. So once you got into Hizbut Tahrir, uh, I mean, they do believe as in, like, the, the the ideals that they have, like once they do achieve this Islamic state, um, they do have opinions about what should happen to apostates, you know, how women should be treated. Oh, 100%. Are, are, those, are those things that you believe? So describe a little bit, you know, you wore the hijab, you wore the burqa, you did the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and did yeah. you also believe these things? How did you rationalize uh, these things in your, because I mean, it sounds like there's a grooming process. I mean, this, you yeah, know, when you're talking about culturing them, it sounds like it's grooming and priming uh, the mindset. It's, so. Yeah, it's really uh, teaching you how to think and how to react to everything, like in an Islamic way. So when you're watching anything on TV or if you like are out in public, like how to process it as a Muslim and how to look at it and everything is based off of like, you know, uh, your afterlife and how this is affecting like your Islam and how to behave in Islamic personality. So um, he like would sit me down and the way they like lecture you. I always say he always lectures you is just like sitting you down and explaining something to you over and over for as long as it takes until he sees that you can repeat it back and be fully understanding. So I was like a hundred percent convinced of the Quran that it was like a hundred percent God's words. So everything that the Hizab teaches about like Islam being an ideology and everything was like following the prophet's methods i was a hundred percent convinced by it and i felt extremely fortunate to be like guided to that like i was guided and i converted uh or reverted and was got to get married and not make any mistakes with my Islam. so i was like i had this like i felt honored so i was like fully convinced by it. and so as so as I was learning more and more about Islam, the longer you're in it, you're already fully convinced. So when I heard about the apostasy, that was like several months later, but it was like, well, whatever, like, I'm not going to leave, like, obviously. So it wasn't even, it didn't But even, you think it's justified for people to be killed? I didn't, uh, I didn't like, because I, I think there had been a case in Iran that came was in the news and that's when like we were talking about it like the Hizb talk about it as well and saying yeah it is a legit law and it will be implemented but so but it's merciful because if you leave Islam you don't just go kill them you go and you bring them back and you try to convince them and there's a process and you know you don't kill them until they like fully reject or whatever so it was like this like you know it's merciful so we would probably like convince I was them to go back I was told that the stoning of gay people was also merciful in Islam because if you because die, be, no, because you, you paid the price and now you don't have to burn for it. Right. So right. the right? punishments, the Sharia punishments are like considered a punishment here that you will uh, spare you from in the afterlife hell. or in right. the grave. But not the apostasy one, because if you're not a Muslim, you're going to go to hell anyways. Right. Unless you, yes. Uh, but they, that's yeah. Not fair. Is that what? Hmm? That's not fair. Just be, all of the other punishments can like get you there. You can atone on earth and you don't have to go. go I don't know control. if all of them. I think it's not just all partial. Them, yeah. Like it's, Yet, you know, it's not like it does carry over to so the, the, the life. stoning of the gay person is for the sake of the gay person apparently because now you don't burn in hell but the killing of the apostate is for the sake of the ummah because right, you're, threat, to protect, you're, yeah. you're protecting the islamic community for the spreading of the corruption and also the suggestion that this is even a possibility yeah. so it's not for your sake that's for the sake of the other exactly. muslims yeah yeah wow <laughs> how does it so yeah, let's move on. So, how does it now? You're you're married. Uh, you have several kids um, with your like the, his with the, her, your husband, uh, and how does it start unraveling? Does the, the is it that things start not making sense, or is it uh, that 
something happens with the marriage? What happens? Well, where? As, yeah, I mean, so we were quite segregated initially, like as I was, uh, when I first converted and got married and we were like isolated in different cities and stuff. And, but as I was having more kids, we moved closer to my family. And then after uh, a time, he married a second wife too. And so. In being, Canada. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very common actually we found out after it happened that there's like lots so and anyway yeah so during that time um it's very hard to be segregated in in uh, among society and as our kids were getting older and i have an autistic child so i had to start bringing him to therapy we were homeschooling all the kids but he had to be brought like to therapy so i would have to go out and now be among society. So the difficulties of that and being like as practicing and having to keep like the second family from everybody like and have that second life and kind of like have lie to people about stuff that just started really wearing on me. And I didn't, it wasn't me like not liking Islam. It was more me just, it was wearing on me to a point where I didn't know what to do anymore. Like I felt like I just, I had to get out and I I didn't know, like, I, I just, I, I just had to get out and I couldn't even explain why. And it was like watching my kids grow up and now having to force them to do this thing that I had chosen. And I always thought that I would you know, the kids would have the freedom to choose as well, like, because there was the, the no compulsion. I thought that our kids would get that chance as well. But as they were getting older, I was realizing, no, like, it's being enforced on everybody's kids. Like, you just, that whole, wow. like, beat them until they're seven to pray, like, and then those stupid verses about, like, you're literally forcing your kids to practice. I think that the point that you brought up about, um, forcing your kids to go through something that you had chosen. Yeah. That's so important because when they talk about the no compulsion thing, um, they say, well, you know, you're free to choose. And a lot of people are like, I'm choosing Islam. I'm choosing Islam. Mm -hmm. But then what they do is that, you know, the, the, when they have kids, you know, you, f you force it on them and you indoctrinate yeah. them. That's not a choice. No. Yeah. You know, that's not a choice. It's a, uh, so I, I think what you mentioned there is actually pretty profound in that sense, like when we talk about whether religion can be a choice and whether indoctrination um, is, is a choice or not. So that, I'm actually really glad that you had that insight. That Well, that was what actually the straw that broke the camel's back that made me, like I had been wanting to go for a long time, but I understood how hard it would be because I was so, like I had kept so many secrets from my own family like I didn't even know where I would go but um it was just when my kids would actually like I saw that in them that they just they didn't want that anymore it was like this weird like because my ex would go back and forth between the two houses and when he was coming to my house like the kids were just like scared like they didn't want him coming anymore and it was that's when I started seeing like okay I gotta get out now mm -hmm. and I, I honestly, like, over these past few years, uh, as I've gotten out of it, I'm only starting to really understand, like, what it was. Because I just, like, Islam wasn't even the thing I was running from. I was just running from the situation. And then after a, a time, like, I had taken my hijab off at that time, too. I just, I couldn't, like, I, I was so messed up like going out into public was terrifying me i was terrified of everybody like i thought like i was so scared of just being a public Why? muslim just that like like there's like right-wing people that were gonna try to attack me it was like, this crazy like anxiety like i didn't i couldn't function or it was just i was being really irrational with did you did you did you face any discrimination from maybe, any? like a little bit like just people mm. making comments or like looking at me. It was like, there was like a lot of tea acts going on. And so people were starting to like, um, look at Muslims, you know, like that. But for me, it was just like, 
the anxiety of everything was just getting me to a, a point and I took my hijab off and that like was such a relief because I just like blended in now <laughs> to society mm. and so that ease helped me to um so as as much as it as much as you think that um anxiety was you exaggerated like so there is some discrimination but not to the point that would warrant the amount of anxiety that you felt right? right however does this suggest that a lot of muslims are still other muslims are experiencing that? i mean even if you think it's unjustified it's still pretty sad that they're experiencing that much anxiety like yeah. is that a common is that something that other Muslims think you're ex like in Canada or United States are experiencing on a daily basis? That I think level so. Of like, mm. I think every time any news comes out, like what's been happening, I think like hijabi women would be a lot more afraid to go out in public. There's been Aww. like, I totally, it affected me. Mm. That is sad. What would you, what would you suggest to, for people to a uh, non-Muslims to do like is there any I, but given that you had the experience of being a hijabi yeah, good question. woman yeah what would you i don't know there's like i i don't even know hmm. it's just more people just look at you and i think just the added paranoia just i don't know you know the 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 one suggestion would be to be friendly or smile at somebody, but that's also like haram. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. Yeah, you like, can't, you can't do that with the hijabi. You can't do, we can't do that with the hijabi. You uh, can't, you can. Yeah, but just like being nicer. Just being, 